from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Hey, welcome to theCUBE's coverage of IBM Think, the digital event experience. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Welcoming back to the program, one of our CUBE alum, Dominique Dubois joins me. She is the Global Strategy and Offerings Executive in the Business Transformation Services of IBM. Dominique, it's great to talk to you again. Hi Lisa, great to be with you today. So we're going to be talking about the theme of this interview is going to be the ROI of AI for business. We've been talking about mm -hmm. AI emerging technologies for a long time now. We've also seen a massive change in the world. So I'd love to talk to you about how organizations are, are adopting these emerging technologies to really help transform their businesses. And one of the things that you've talked about in the past is that there's these different elements of AI for business. One of them is trust, right? Mm -hmm. The second is ease of use. And then there's this importance of data and all of these important emerging technologies that require so much data. How do those elements of AI come together to help IBM's clients be able to deliver the products and services that their customers are depending on? Yeah, th thank you, Lisa. So, you know, when we look at AI and AI solutions with our clients, I think, you know, how that comes together is in, in the way in which we don't look at AI or an AI application or solution independently. Like we're, we're looking at it and we're applying it within our customers' operations with respect to the work that it's going to do, with respect to the part of the operations and the workflow and the function that it sits in, right? So the idea around trust and ease of use and the data that can be um, leveraged in order to um, kind of create that AI and, and allow that AI to be self-learning and continue to add value really is fundamental around how we um, how we design and how we implement it within the workflow itself and how we are working with the employees, with the actual humans that are going to be touching that AI, right? To help them um, with new skills that are required to work with AI, to help them with what we call the new ways of working, right? Because it's that, that adoption that really is critical to get the use of AI in enterprises at scale. That adoption that you just mentioned, that's critical. That that mm -hmm. can be kind of, you know, table stakes. But what we've seen in the last year is that we've all had to pivot multiple times and be reactionary or uh, reactive to so many things out of our control. I'm curious what you've seen in the last year in terms of the appetite for adoption in, on, on the employees mm -hmm. front. Are they more willing to go, all right, we've got to change the way we do things and it's probably going to be, perm some of these are going to be permanent. Yeah, Lisa, we've absolutely seen um, a huge rise in the adoption, right? Or in the op openness, the, the mindset, let's just call it the mindset, right? It's more of an open mindset around the use of technology, the use of technology that might be AI backed or AI based um, and, and the willingness to, and I always said the willingness to try is really then what starts that journey of trust, right? And we're seeing that open up in spades. That is absolutely critical, is just the willingness, being open-minded enough to go, all right, we've got to do this, so we've got to think about mm -hmm. this. We don't really have any other choices here. The things are changing pretty quickly. So talk to me in this uh, last year of change, we've seen massive disruptions and some silver linings for sure, but I'd love to know what IBM and the state of Rhode Island um, have done together in, in this challenging time. Yeah, so um, really interesting partnership that we started with the state of Rhode Island. Obviously, I think this year there's been lots of themes. One of them has been speed. So everything that we had to do has been with haste, right, with urgency. And that's no different than what we did with the state of Rhode Island. You know, the governor there, um, Gina Raimondo, she took very swift action, right, when the pandemic start and started. And one of the actions she took was to partner with private firms such as IBM and others to really help get her economy back open. And that required a lot of things. One of them, as you mentioned, trust, right? Was a, was a major part um, of what the governor there needed with her citizenships, with her citizens, excuse me, in order to um, be able to open back up the economy, right? And so a key pillar um, of her program and with our partnership was around um, the AI-backed solutions that we brought to the state of Rhode Island. So inclusive of contact tracing, inclusive of um, work that we had provided around AI-based analytics that allowed really the governor to speak to citizens with, you know, hard facts quickly, 
almost real time, right? And start and start to build that trust, but also confidence. And confidence was the main, you know, one of the main things that was required during this pandemic time. Um, and so uh, there were through this the AI based solutions um, that we provided, which were there, there were many pillars. Um, we were able to help Rhode Island not only open their economy, but they were one of the only states that had their schools open in the fall. And as a parent, I, I always see that as a as a um, litmus, if you will, of how of how a state is doing, right? And so they opened in the fall, and they, as far as I know, have stayed open. And I think part of that was from um, the you know the AI based contact tracing, the AI backed um, virtual, um, sorry, AI analytics the analytics suite around infections and predictions and what we were able to provide the governor in order to make swift decisions and take action. That's really impressive. That's one of the, the challenges I've had living in California is mm -hmm. you, if you're going to say you're going to be data driven, then actually be data driven. But mm -hmm. the technology living in Silicon Valley, the technology is there to be able to facilitate that, yet there was such a disconnect. And I think that's you, you bring up the word confidence and, and mm -hmm. customers need confidence, citizens need confidence, knowing that what we've seen in the last year has shown in a lot of examples that real time isn't a nice to have anymore. It's a requirement. I mean, this is, this is clearly life and death situations. That's a great example of how a state came to IBM to partner and say, how can we actually leverage emerging technologies like AI to really and truly make real time data driven decisions that affect every mm -hmm. single person in our uh, in our state. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Really, really, I think a great example of the public private partnerships that are really popping up now more and more so because of that sense of urgency and that need to build greater ecosystems to create, to create better solutions. So that's a great example in healthcare, one that I, I or in government and in public health that I think everybody mm -hmm will it will resonate with everybody here but you've also done some really interesting work that i want to talk about with ai driven insights into supply chain we've also seen massive changes to supply chain and so many organizations having to figure out whether they were brick and mortar only changing that or really leveraging technology to figure out where do we need to be distributing you know products and services where do we need to be investing talk to me about bestseller India and what it is that you guys have done there with intelligent workflows to really help them transform their supply chain. Yeah, bestseller India, really great, hugely successful fashion forward company in India. And that term fashion forward always is mind boggling to me because basically these are clothing retailers who go from runway to store within a matter of days couple of weeks, which always, you know, um, it's just hugely impressive, right? Just what goes into that. And when you think about what happens in a supply chain to be able to do that, the requirements around demand forecasting, you know, what quantities of what style, what design to what stores. And you think about the India market, which is notoriously a difficult market, lots of micro segments. Um, and so, you know, very difficult to, to serve. And then you couple that with, you know, what's been happening from an environmental sustainability perspective, right? Um, I think every industry has been looking more about how they can be more environmentally sustainable and the clothing industry is no different. And when, and there is, um, there's a lot of impact, right? So a, a stat that really, um, really has hit, hit home with me, right? 20% of all the clothes that are made globally goes unsold. That's a lot of clothing. That's a lot of material, and that's a lot of environmental product that goes into creating it. And so, you know, Bestseller India really took it to heart to become not only more environmentally sustainable, but to help itself and 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 be digitally um, ready for things like the pandemic um, that ultimately hit. And they were in a really good position. And we worked with them to create something called um, Fabric AI. So Fabric AI is India's only first and only AI based platform that drives their supply chain. So it drives not only um, decisions on what design should they manufacture, but it also helps to improve the entire workflow of what we call design to store. Um, and the AI based solution um, is really revolutionary right within India but it, I think it's pretty revolutionary globally right globally as well um, and it delivered really big impact so reductions in the cost right 15 plus reduction in cost it helped their top line so they saw a five percent plus top line but it also reduced their unsold 
um, inventory by 5% and, 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 and more, right? They're, they're continuing to focus on that environmental sustainability um, that I think is a really um, important part of um, their DNA, right? The best seller in Dia's DNA. And it's one that so many companies and other industries can learn from. I was reading in that case study on Bestseller India on the IBM website that I think it was 40 liters of water to make a cotton shirt. And to your point about yeah. the percentage of clothing that actually goes unsold and ends up in landfills, you see there the opportunity for AI to unlock the visibility that companies in any industry need to determine what, what is the demand that we should be filling? Where should it be distributed? Where should we not be distributing things? Mm -hmm. And so I think it was an interesting kind of impetus that Bestseller India had about one of their retail lines or brands was dropping in revenue, but they've been able to apply this technology to other areas of the business and make a pretty yeah. big impact. Yeah, absolutely. So they had they had um, you know been been very fortunate to have eleven years of growth, right, in all of their brands, and then um, one of their brands kind of hit headwinds. But the the CIO and head of supply chain at that time really had the foresight to be able to say, you know what, we're hitting a problem one of our brands, but this really is indicative of a more systemic problem, and that problem was lack of transparency, lack of um, data driven, you know, predictive um, and autom automation um, to be able to drive a more effective and efficient kind of supply chain end to end. So um, really had the forethought to, to dive into that and fix it. Yeah, and now talk to me about IBM GarageBand and how, how is that, how did that help the, in this particular case? Yeah, so, you know, in order to do this, right, it was, just, they, had, they had no use of AI no use of automation at the time that we started this. Um, and so to really not only design and, and build and execute on Fabric AI, but to actually focus on the adoption, right, of AI within the business, you know, we really needed to bring together the leaders um, across many lines of businesses, IT and HR. Right. And when you think about pulling all of these different units together, we used our IBM garage approach, which really is, um, you know, there are many attributes and many facets of the IBM garage. But I think one of the great um, uh, uh, results of using our IBM garage approach is being able to pull from across all those different businesses, all of which may have some different objectives, right? They're coming from a different lens from a different space and pulling them together around one focus mission, which for here was Fabric AI. Um, and we were able to actually design and build this in um, less than six months, which I think is, is pretty dramatic and pretty incredible from a speed and acceleration perspective. Um, but I think even more so was the adoption, um, was the way in which we had through all of it already been working with the employees because it's really touched almost every part of bestseller india so really being able to work with them and all the employees to make sure that they were ready for these new ways of working that they had the right skills that they had the right perspective and um, that it was going to be adopted that we if we unpack that if we had time that could be a whole separate conversation because the impo right. most important thing about adoption is is the cultures of these different business units have to come together mm -hmm. you said you rolled this out in a very short period of time but you also were taking the focus on the employees. They need to understand the value in it, why they should be adopting it and changing that culture. That's a whole other separate conversation, but that's, an, that's a very interesting and very challenging thing to do. Uh, I wish we had more time to talk about that one. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And I, 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 the, the approach of bringing everyone together, it makes it just very dynamic, um, which is what's needed when you have all of those different lenses coming together, so yeah. It is because you get you get a little bit of that thought diversity as well. What we're using mm -hmm. AI. Well, Dominique, thank you for uh, joining me today. Talk to me about what you guys are doing with many different types of customers. How you're helping them to integrate emerging technologies to really transform the business and their culture. We appreciate your time. Well, thank you, Lisa. Thanks. For Dominique Dubois, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of IBM Think, the digital event.